You guys are probably wondering if I still work on BMWs, and well, the answer is yes, I do. However, now that the Lamborghini is done, I have to go back to other things. And those other things are going to be eventually the 1600, but really, the F10 is back. Nothing major, but it does need a brake service. Uh, luckily, the M Sport wheels have been on it since this spring, so I was able to visually inspect everything. And it looked like the rears were in pretty good condition, um, rotor-wise. But it looks like the fronts have had a pad slap in the past on these rotors. And they're just, they're a little bit ridged. They'd probably be fine to reuse, but this car is going to get new rotors and pads in the front and new pads in the rear, as well as some new sensors. Right now, the fault is on the dashboard, so I know the pads are thin enough where it has eaten through one of those pad wear sensors. But anyway, I grabbed the wheel lock key. I'm gonna glub up, get these wheels off, and we'll get this thing serviced. Just a quick update on this though. Over the weekend, a friend of mine that used to live up here that now lives in Texas that actually built the very nice engine harness for the Mega Squirt here was up here, and we gave this several hours, probably five or six hours of Diag, and essentially what it came out to, we even had the guinea pig um, Blubski over there running a Mega Squirt 2 to kind of take readings from, and nothing seemed to make any difference. So we came to the conclusion that the Mega Squirt 3 must be problematic. So somehow with its previous configuration, it's just no bueno. We're still not exactly sure what's going on, but it's looking more and more likely that this thing is just going to go straight to the K-Series. Which, fine, that's kind of the plan from the get-go anyway. But it would be, you know, nice if I could have made this thing run and drive on the M10 while I wait for Classic Daily to finish up the parts for that engine over there. But anyway, just a quick update on the E10 since I haven't worked on it since 2020. I don't know, there's something actually kind of nice when you see a part that is worn how it's supposed to wear. So they are razor thin, but there's still pad material there. Uh, pad wear sensor up through here, through a little steel clip here, another one there, another one there, rubber isolator clip there, another one there, and then there's one of these plastic junction boxes where we disconnected from the car. Next up, remove the two little plastic caps on the back of the guide pins. They're already removed in this image here. And grab your seven millimeter Allen Get your ratchet, remove that. That will separate the center portion of the caliper from the carrier. Uh, after that, we're gonna get the six millimeter Allen. We're gonna start impacting that off to get the brake disc off. And then finally, we'll be taking the carrier off, which looks like it's probably 18s or 19s. All right, there we have our caliper. And it's not good practice to dangle the caliper by the line, but I'm going to in this case. <sighs> So I just talked about the health of the brake system. Let's see if we can focus. So yeah, we're down to maybe two mil on that pad, but we're still at four on this one. So what that means when you see uneven, it's pretty common on sliding calipers. It means your guide pins are binding up a little bit. So these were dry and they got some schmoo on them. I will be taking a wire brush, getting those all cut down to uh, shiny metal again, and then we'll be greasing them up before we put them back in these orifices here. And then, uh, that should help the new pads wear much more evenly front to back. Anyway, let's zip the carrier off and let's get this disc off as well. All right, so there's a few areas I'm gonna be hitting with a wire wheel. The entire hub and hub centric area, obviously gonna be hitting the inside ledges of the caliper carrier where the pads sit and the ledge on this side as well. I'll be cleaning that up. And then of course, the guide pins. All right, rotor back on, anti-seize on the retaining screw. Get that back on. Torque down the 18s on the caliper carrier. Slid the pads into the caliper. Slid the wear sensor into the pad. Fed that back up through all of the factory retaining into the junction box. Now we just have to grease up the guide pins and put them back into these little rubber carriers here. We got them all cleaned up, but gotta grease them and torque them. And there we have it. Oh wait, nope, sorry. One more item. We gotta put on the anti-rattle clip real quick. 
There we go. Now this corner is done and we can move on to the other side, which is the same as this one. So I'm not going to show you, but then we will move on to the rear axle just for pads. It's going to be fairly boring, but hey man, you got to do what you got to do. All right. And then the rear, the wear sensor is on this side. So we'll go through all that too. But my first step is to get a pry bar in here and slack off the caliper which shouldn't be a big deal. Um, make sure the electric parking brake is off. Worth mentioning, there's our little junction box and they wire this away. Once we've done that, we will, oh, these aren't sevens. It's, this is like the Japanese style. So we'll have to hold this stationary and grab looks like a 13 over here and twist that off to pull our entire caliper off the carrier. Okay, so I've got the E-plug off of the parking brake. Now we're gonna rip the two Torx T30s out of this to gain access to the triple scar inside to retract the piston. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and, can't remember which direction. I think we go clockwise to retract. Well, let's check here. Yes, indeed, it is clockwise. There's gonna be no resistance to it, but all you're doing is removing the piston inside. We're retracting that back into the assembly, and then you can compress the actual fluid piston normally. So that's all done. We'll throw the electric motor back on it, get all that sealed back in, and we'll continue servicing the brakes. Okay, got those anti-rattle clips out as well, got the pads out, and the electric is still disconnected for now. We'll reconnect it once we get that all back on. Let's throw in the new clips and pads, get that sensor wired up, and then get that uh, caliper all put back together. Now that kind of sucked a little. There we are. Well, let's get the caliper back on. Whew. Definitely harder than the front axle. Lazy me forgot to record the rest, but yeah, once you've pulled those actuators off the back, screwed the pistons back, you can just compress the actual hydraulic piston like normal, put the actuators back on, plug in the electrical again and they will reset automatically. So I didn't have to do anything crazy with the computer, but that is an annoying last step for sure. Spicy's back. Nothing wrong with it, just actually mods this time around. A pretty common, and we'll call it performance modification, is to install a set of E90 M3 slash 1 Series M that car front and rear control arms so in the front that's going to be our front lower and our front uh sorry rear lower control arm also known as a control arm and a thrust arm and then in the, in the rear i can't actually remember i think it's only yeah looks like two pieces a piece in the back as well so this is a kit you can get uh, i can't remember if i got this on fcp but I got it wherever it was cheapest. So we're going to go ahead and try to get that done. I'm not really looking forward to it, but I think it shouldn't be too, too bad. I believe both of the uh, arms are on the top. And effectively, what it does is gives us slightly uh, more camber. So anyway, I need to go glove up and deal with a couple things. But first things first, I'm going to be ripping off all four wheels and tires. And then I'm actually going to start with the back because I always like to do the hard part of the project first and the rear is going to be tougher. All right, so we have the upper control arm. We have the lower or the forward, I guess. This one's a little shorter. This one's a little bit longer. This one is captive into the knuckle here. Back here, it looks like we have probably 18s and that goes through the subframe. A little dinky old sway bar. And then here it looks like 18s on both sides and Wow, is this captive as well? Uh, it is. Doesn't look like it's very easy to get to. So anyway, it looks like just a ton of 18s, but we'll see. I'm gonna start taking this apart. I may very well need my little lift under here, but let's get it all pulled apart first and just sort of see what we're working with here. The only thing I've done so far is remove this little plastic clamp thing. And there's a reason why I came with a new one, because these are hydroformed aluminum and these are stamped steel. Of course, the light didn't turn on. Anyway, the outer, I was able to get my speed wrench on it just and then use a cheater wrench on that. 
this guy I was able to get out with nothing but a pair of wrenches. The clearances are so bad in here. So bad. All right, and we have the upper removed as well. The bolts are in on the lower, but they are not tight. And the reason why is because you have to compress the suspension before you tighten them up. Ball joint is okay, but this bushing would not be. Anyway, the fronts seem like they're the same, but they're not. They do have a little bit of a bevel. You just follow the arc and the bevel and you'll find the correct one. Same thing for the rears. You'll see this little bevel right here. So all we're gonna do is transfer the bolt over, throw this in the car. And again, as far as I can tell here, these are actually the same geometry as the steel ones. They're just a lot lighter. So I'm speculating that all the camber adjustment actually happens in the front. But anyway, let's get these threaded back in. Move to the other side. New hotness. Old and, well, not busted. Anyway, let's do it all over again, shall we? Once we get all the bolts in, I'll bring over the trans jack. We'll tighten everything down once we've compressed the suspension. All right, they're in. That was surprisingly difficult. That last one getting through was tough. Uh, everything is threaded. I will not be tightening it until I get everything actually set up and ready for tightening. But before I do that, we're going to go over to the front and we're going to swap out the thrust and control arms. And then right at the end, I'll go through and tighten everything down. All right. Fronts are bigger. Those are 21 or 22 on the outside. Looks like we still have 18 on the inside. So let me get the Ugga Dugga out with a 21 or a 22. Start with those because sometimes they don't separate nice. And then over here, I have to deal with uh, taking this little bad boy off. This is the Xenon HID self-leveling light sensor thingy. So we will need this little bracket, but we won't be reusing anything else. All right, all that's out. Actually still looked pretty okay, but he'll be getting the benefit of some new thrust arms along with everything else. So yeah, let's unwrap all that junk and slap it back in, making sure, of course, we get the right one in the right spot. Whew. Control arms in. I did have to push a little bit with my pry bar in here to get that uh, ball joint in there. Over here, just a rubber mallet was able to get that shoved up into the pocket. You can see I've got the uh, ball joints all the way through the knuckle, but nothing's tightened yet. I'm going to wait until, of course, we get over here. Then I will dig out the trans jack and we'll start uh, putting tension pressure on everything and once that's all done with then we can torque everything down put the wheels back on and uh, she'll finally be done man nothing of this is really that hard but it is all annoying also the 135 convertible i don't know if that's unique but this thing has more eight millimeter fasteners on it than like any other bmw i have ever worked on Oh God, all right, so just a thrust arm left. I did get the new level sensor thingamadoop in there. After that, we'll get her all tightened up. Excuse me, get the belly pan back on and we're gonna be done. All right, all tightened up. Everything looks fantastic. Got the belly pan back on. I'm gonna get myself cleaned up back there, throw the wheels and tires on and let's take it for a test drive. Well, let's see, that's a hell of a lot of components changed. I'm not expecting this to be ooh, exactly perfect. I'm guessing this thing is going to very desperately need an alignment. Uh, yeah, judging by how much drag there is just rolling out of the garage, oh yeah. I'm going to have him get an alignment at the BMW shop just down the road. This is aggressive. Holy shnikes. Wow, I might have to do something about that. Wow, it pulls so freaking hard. <laughs> Oh, wow. I got to look at this out. It's, oh my God, dude. That's terrifying. The caster is ridiculous. 
I might have to put this on the lift and uh, wow, figure out what direction they need to go just a little bit. This is so bad. If you did not have your wits about you, this thing would jerk the wheel so hard out of your hands. <laughs> okay, all right, let's take a quick look outside. Wow. Yeah, one hand is, is a bad idea. <laughs> this thing is just dropping rubber everywhere. Okay, gotta love two doors. All right, so it's towed in really, really far. Okay. Yeah, this is going back on the lift. That's that's really, really, really bad. I don't want to ruin his pilot sport 4S's. All right. So I pulled out a mm, quarter of an inch on both sides, quite a bit, maybe even a little bit more on that side. I don't know, but I feel better about that, not destroying the tires for a short drive. Let's see how that does. Uh, when it's loaded up, we're out quite a bit now, so I'm going to split that difference. I'll try again. That actually looks pretty good. It's still towed out a little bit, but I don't think that's going to murder the tires. All right, let's take it for a quick test drive. I feel like the Vanos makes a little bit of noise on this thing. Uh, so far, it feels great. Feels really good. Actually drives pretty straight. Huh. Pulls a teeny tiny bit left, but honestly for an eyeball alignment. So for those of you doing this job at home, I turned them about five, you know, six turns on the wrench. Okay. Yeah, it needs an alignment for sure, but it's it's not pulling too bad, so I'm okay with that. Cool. Job well done.